Hey, good morning. This is Maria back with another video. It's like 9.06 a.m. and I decided to make this video because I had problems uploading it from my phone. So yeah, I'm still having issues with that. Um, so the first video I made was called Accusations and the Root of the Problem. And um, the accusations and the root of the problem um, originated from my blood relations. Um, and um, often, you know, my family, it originated with my mother, I would say, because my mother has, um, is a very per unhappy person. And she's, oh, I've noticed that she's always been very critical of people that, you know, came off as happy. <laughs> she, I remember that since I was a little kid, she would point certain people out and kind of complain about them for no real reason. But um, she's one of those people that's not happy with herself. And because, you know, she, um, you know, had me, and um, I was an unplanned pregnancy. And um, she kind of resents me for, you know, it's just a family scapegoating thing. For more information on family scapegoating, you know, you might want to Google it. But, um, you know, so she, these differences were pointed out, you know. Um, I remember she would tell the story about how I wasn't really planned or whatever. And so this gets spoken to the children, and the children, uh, her children, <laughs> they're not even my siblings at this point, her children um, basically pick up on this, and it becomes um, an instant, you know, war against Maria. And this has been going on for many years. So um, basically my siblings are also unhappy with themselves, and so they constantly, you know, want to be a part of my life so they can analyze it and pick it apart, okay? So this is a form of domestic abuse um, that has basically been... Um, uh, haunting me for many, many years. And um, so, and then you have um, the differences of opinions. Like, you know, my family, they're not the kind of people, they don't take care of themselves. Okay, you, if you look at my family and you look at me, you're going to see that we are two different, that this is completely different. Like, you wonder how in the world, you know, I could be so different from my family. Um, I have different morals in my family. I have different views in life in my family. And I don't believe that my family lives... Um, their life in a way that um, I would ever want to model after, you know. Um, and so there's a lot of jealousy and competitiveness because obviously that's the root of the issue. Um, if somebody is basically involving themselves in your life when you never gave them any authorization to do so, um, it's none of their business, regardless of what I do. I'm an adult, you know. But they feel like they have to attach themselves somehow. And the reason why they're attaching themselves is because of competitive reasons. I'm not interested in competing any, with anybody. But um, then I was also thinking about how they generated all these issues um, based on, uh, you know, their competitive behavior and their envy and their foolishness. And I don't have anything to do with that. I really don't. I mean, I, I don't have anything to do with what they project onto me. Just like the women who, you know, are trying to accuse me of God knows what. And the reason why I get, you know, um, harassed by some of these ladies in these employment agencies, and this, these tend to be the, ma the main ones, okay? I think it's like basically, um, you know, all the agencies that have called me up and, and started the harassment issues. These women are, are basically um, competitive towards me. Um, Basic, basically because they want a lifestyle, they think I want what they want. I don't want what you want. I don't. I mean, I'm not even in your class. I don't, I don't even want to live any way like you, okay? Um, so, you know, I was mentioning in my last video about how, you know, um, when I was working at Murray's Family Farms, there were people that would come in, vendors, vendors or people that were doing repair work or whatever, and contract work or whatever, <laughs> and people would say, oh, you know, don't you like so-and-so? And the thing is, I don't like people. Uh, I'm not saying I don't like people. I'm just saying is, you know, I don't use work as an opportunity as a, um, as a dating <laughs> platform, okay? And, you know, at the time, obviously, I was, I was married, you know, so I, I, and I didn't understand why they were trying to, um, you know, coax me into something like that, you know what I mean? But obviously, you know, there are people in this, in the world that come, you, you encounter that are good looking, you know, and, and usually if I find somebody who's good looking, I usually think, well, you know, this should be, you know, a fashion magazine, or maybe they should be in acting, or maybe they should be a model or something. <coughs> Those things do come into your mind, because you can't help but notice, 
if somebody is good looking, okay? But that's not enough to make me want to develop a relationship with him. Also, you know, like I said, I've always taken um, my job seriously. And anybody who, who knows about sexual harassment should be, very <coughs> should be warned about mixing those two. You know, that applies to vendors, it applies to um, contractors, it applies to anybody that comes into your place of employment. So I, I don't get involved with stuff like that at all. Okay, my work has, I don't want my work to have anything to do with that sort of stuff. I just don't, okay. I've always believed in keeping it separate. I have no interest in doing anything like that. So, you know, I was thinking about how, you know, um, there's a lot of people I consider to be opportunists, okay. They're looking to, um, to make money off of, you know, other people's mistakes. Because really, if, if I was an opportunist, I could find several ways to just, just clear people out financially. And there's a lot of women, as, as well as men, who take advantage of the little things that other people don't seem to be paying attention to. There's a few stories that, that come to mind. Like, there was this one guy, and he was, um, he tried to, he sued his company. He had a, um elderly um, manager. And, the, you know, of course older people, okay? Older people constantly refer to, to, to other people, like, with terms of endearment. Like, They'll say things like honey or sweetie. I don't, I've known so many older people who do this, and they don't mean anything by it. I know that they don't, okay? I know they don't. It's just a habit, okay? Because when you get to a certain age, everybody probably to you is a baby. Everybody to you is probably sweet like a little baby. I mean, that's just how they are. A lot of older people are like that, all right? I wouldn't even think, if somebody, if an older person says that to me, like an older woman or something like that, I wouldn't even think anything of it. I wouldn't think of her as a little old granny lady or whatever, okay? But this guy obviously wanted something. So he basically filed sexual harassment charges against this woman, okay? Now, I, now my thing is, is that she shouldn't have said what she said because I know where she was coming from. I mean, to me, that's harmless. I mean, like, I have been called that by so many older people, I, I can't even, like, I, I, I lose, I've lost track of how many times an older person has said something like that to me, okay? But he was looking for a loophole. He was looking to cash in. And you know what? People can get away with stuff like that. And I also remember, like, when I was at Walmart many years ago, there was a little boy who got sick in Walmart. And he barked all over the floor. Okay. There was a lady standing by an ATM machine. And I, it was so funny. I don't know why she caught my eye, but I kept thinking, I know what this woman's going to do. I know what this woman's going to do. She backed up and started gaining momentum. She started walking really fast, and she slipped in the bark on purpose. Now, I don't know if she tried to sue this particular Walmart, but I'm sure that was in the back of her mind. Because, you know what, if, if people injure themselves on a certain property, they could try to get money for it. And I personally think that she slipped into that bar on purpose so she could cash in. Okay? Now, I don't care what a person looks like, how they behave. You know, if a, if a person is really on the up and up, if they really, really are truly professional, they're not going to let bullshit sway them. Okay? So, like, for example, um, I know there was a Saturday Night Live skit they, um, that were making a joke on sexual harassment, okay? It was kind of exaggerated. But, like, for example, okay, but, like, for example, um, I, this, keeping this, this issue in mind, okay, about how people are trying to um, take advantage of the stupidity of a lot of companies, okay? I don't care if I was a guy and some, one of my employees came in my office with a string bikini, Okay, now, I, I wouldn't care, if, if I was this guy, to handle it professionally, I would have someone of the other sex, another female employee, basically confront her and tell her to go back and change clothes or something or, or whatever, you know, and get back in the appropriate clothes or whatever, or handle it. Because I wouldn't want any sort of flaw or anybody ever making any accusation against me on this issue. That is a very serious issue. Okay, and like I said, there's a lot of people out there who are just looking to make money, period. Okay, and so if a person is responsible, they will know that. 
they will always keep that in the back of their mind. These are hard times, okay? And there's lawsuits to be made everywhere. Because that's how stupid people are. And they don't think about it. But I do, okay? So anyway, um, uh, I, I, I don't want people projecting their bullshit onto me, okay? And I'm certainly not going to... Um, and I'm not interested in having work relationships, relationship, love relationships at work. I just don't. To me, men are at work are, are just as insignificant. Not insignificant, but they're like, I look at them as a part of the job. They're like a stapler. They're like the desk. They're like the ruler. They're like whatever. That whatever thing that goes a part of the job. I don't get involved with that for good reason. Okay. There was also another issue. A, a late a, a man, a, a manager was dating his subordinate, okay? Now, oftentimes, you know, people have rocky relationships, and they both were consenting adults, but you know what? When the end relationship ended badly, guess what? She wanted to turn around and, and cry out sexual harassment. No. I mean, and, and, the, and the thing is, is that she probably was using all kinds of, you know, lies, saying, well, he cut me into it, or he threatened me, but, you know, he threatened my job, and blah, 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 blah. You know, and, and I, I don't believe in mixing the two. I don't. And I will never do that. I don't want to be part of that shit. Okay? It, it, it's stupid to actually involve yourself with other people like that in your workplace. Now, I understand some people just fall in love. Okay? I, 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 they, I do. They do. And sometimes they just do. Okay? I personally don't think it's a good idea. But sometimes they do. And when they do, I personally think that there should be certain ways that you should go about handling it. You know, but I'm not interested in romance at work. I'm just not. You know what I mean? I'm not interested in it. I'm the person who is there to do a job. Period. Okay? And I don't, I, I, I think what's going on here in Bakersfield um, and what they've started is just a bunch of bullshit. Okay? And I, I find it offensive and I don't ever want to be a part of that nonsense. That's just the way it is. I don't play around at work. I'm all about work. You know? And, and there's a, like I said, there's a difference between somebody who's professional and somebody who dresses provocative. I'm a professional person in my words, deeds, and actions, and that's just the way it is. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, I do resent my family for pointing me out based on their personal opinions, okay? Um, I remember having a dream uh, many years ago about my mom. This was a reoccurring dream. It started when I was like seven, and it took place in front of the... Um, laundry closet in my old home in, in, the, in the middle of the hallway. And me and my mom were folding laundry. And um, her kids, I'm going to call them her kids. They're my siblings, but they're her kids at this point. I couldn't see them, but I could feel their presence was there, you know. And um, it, it basically <clears throat> was like, you know, my mom and we were folding laundry, and my other ki brothers and sisters were, like, looking in on the scene. They were, like, probably behind my mother. And um, I, there was a firecracker that went off in my mother's face. And um, I took a napkin and I smeared it, and it ended up smearing all over her face, you know. And I think that that dream, because it was reoccurring, must have been a prophetic dream. Like, for example, my mom is basically, it's like a wake-up call to my mother and her narcissistic behavior. You know what I mean? Her narcissistic behavior is the root of all these issues because she created monsters is what she did. You know what I mean? She create she created the 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 uh, aggression in her kids. She created the scapegoating. It's all on her. You know, um, I'm not responsible for the image of my family. I'm not. You know what I mean? My views on life are completely independent from them, and I don't think that I'm tired of them thinking that. Well. Um, that that I'm somehow responsible for what they do, or I mean, what for what their how their life is turned out, or that I'm making the family look bad. I I wouldn't the family would look bad whether I existed or not. Okay, you could tell by looking at my mother that that's the case. Okay, she doesn't take care of herself. She basically raised a bunch of monsters. Her kids are psychotic. This is the issue. Okay. And really, like I said, that would have been the issue whether I was there or not. The only thing is, is that because I do exist, they use me as a scapegoat for their problems. And I've noticed that a lot of times in, in family scapegoating issues, the, um, the child that's scapegoated is usually the one who's on the up and up, meaning they're the ones who 
tell you have they have more feelings, they have empathy, they um they um have clear objectives in life, and the other children are usually um I guess you call them golden child children or or whatever. They may have a better relationship with the mother or the the other the, the parent, but at the same time, um, they have a very uh, narcissistic behavior, and they do a lot of things that to me are um, inappropriate. So every kid makes mistakes. You know, I made a lot of mistakes growing up and living in that family. You know, a lot of it was just normal stuff, you know what I mean? Every kid makes mistakes. My brother made mistakes, okay? My sister Lisa made mistakes, okay? Everybody makes mistakes, period, okay? Um, but I, I, that, to me, that, like I said, my family's the kind of people, they don't forgive things. They don't let things go. And in all the mistakes that I made, I do realize that, um, you know, I realize my errors, and I strive not to be that person again. You know what I mean? If I did something wrong, I, I really have felt over the years that the things that I did do wrong plagued my mind for many years, okay? I'm the kind of person, when I make a mistake, it really does affect me. It makes me feel really bad, and it makes me want to change, and that's how I am, you know what I mean? Because if I see that I hurt somebody or I did something wrong that affected somebody else's life, then I try my hardest to not do that again, and that's the kind of person I am. But see, my family, they don't see it that way, that if you make a mistake, then that's just who you are. Because that's how they are, you know. What I mean, they have habitual, have, have habitual um, uh, behavior processes and things that that they constantly do. They're like circular issues that constantly never correct themselves. Whereas, and that's not the case with me. You know what I mean? I'm not like that. You know, if I see that I did something wrong, there's a lot of fear, terror, anguish, mental stress that I go through by making that mistake, and so I realize I'm not going to do that again, you know what I mean, so I try very hard to correct the issue, so no, I mean, um, I'm completely different than my family, um, let's see, keeping that tight, yeah, I was just going to say that, you know, some parents, some families, um, they aren't really interested in developing their children. Um, in a way where they're nurturing and they're actually providing the emotional support to their children. Um, and they're not necessarily, the only reason why they show an interest in the children's accomplishments is because they feel as though it makes them look good. So a lot of times, like when parents, they have kids who are straight-A students, they're not really necessarily thinking about the kid's future. They're thinking about how that makes them look good. Okay, that's a narcissistic... Um, uh, uh, what do you call it? That that's narcissistic to be that way. Okay, uh, and I would say that that was a lot in my family. Like things that I would do, um, they never really thought about my future. It was more things that related to them, like how that makes them look good. If I did something wrong at school, it wasn't because they weren't concerned about you know how that was going to affect my future. They were concerned about how that made them look as a parent. So that's bullshit. And narcissists, they, they, they require a certain amount of supply, okay? Like in this situation, um, there are the wheels of, in, are already in motion with a lot of these psychotic people. Um, like, for example, you know, some of the women that got involved in, in the, all these previous employers that I had to deal with. That, and, see, they were sitting here basically hunting me down and making my life a living hell um, based on the issues, I believe, that related to Joel's family. Now, now there's clarification that's provided, okay? And everybody should know that his family's a piece of shit, okay? But still, there's still this one part of them that wants to take this shit out on me. Why? I'm a victim here, okay? Now, I'm not saying that what I did in life to Joel was right, okay? But I really don't think it was that big of a deal, especially since it doesn't involve other people. But the narcissistic supply. So I'm an innocent person in this. And the Facebook drama, it was exactly that. It was Facebook drama. Okay? It was all based on lies. Every single last bit of it. But still, they've been, you know, wanting to harass me for so many years that they don't know what to do with themselves anymore. And they need, narcissistic people need the supply. They need somebody to hurt. That's just how they are. So I'm not, you know, 